I have been living in this caravan for three and a half years now. One of the advantages has been the ability to travel and work at the same time. And I can shift, so I have time in a stunning location. And then if I feel like family time, I can move closer to my family or close to my friends or I can have more intense work time and move to that job. I love that I have my own home and I don't have to pay off any more money on it. I don't have a mortgage. It's given me a lot more freedom to explore things that interest me. You get to experience things that are generally outside of your budget. My reason for moving into a caravan was because I wanted my own home. I had been flatting for quite a few years and started saving for a house and realized I just wasn't going to be able to afford a house in Auckland on my own. So I started looking at my options. I was looking at van life, tiny house and motorhomes as well as caravans. But decided on a caravan because I found anything with an engine was just too expensive and a tiny house took time to build whereas a caravan you could just pick it up that day from a, a caravan dealer. This is a Sterling Europa 260. It's 21 foot long. This is my kitchen space. When I first moved into the caravan, I did struggle a bit with how to use this space well, but I've ended up kind of having my dishes drying here, my chopping board kind of balanced over the sink, and I always have this glass up with the, uh, the kettle sitting on the stove top. So I've got three gas burners and one electric hob, a grill and an oven, and it really works exactly the same as uh, one you would get in the house. I can cook anything. The only downside really is I've got limited space for pots and pans and other kind of cooking accessories. I can extend the space by dropping down this board just to give a bit more kitchen space. There was a microwave here, but I found I just didn't have enough space for all my food. So instead, I've put extra containers just to hold bulky food and then some fruit here. And then I have a drawer on either side for my other food. <laughs> this is kind of my dinner food cupboard for like all the spices and rice etc. And then my other cupboard I've kind of ended up having for tea and snacks. And there's also a skylight, which is great in summer. And then this is the lounge. I love all the windows and how I can kind of look out and enjoy the scenery while working from here. And then this seating area also becomes a queen size bed if I ever have guests staying over. And then under the seat are all my batteries. So I've now got two 6 volt 390 amp hour deep cycle batteries and it's actually more than enough. I never really need to worry about power at the moment. It's probably too much and probably too heavy for this type of caravan as well. I've also got a 400 watt inverter for running my laptop and charging my camera batteries etc. I get my power from a solar panel on the roof. I also plug into the power. And this is my freshwater and grey water setup. The tanks are separate, sit next to the caravan, and I then attach them. This is where the freshwater inlet is, and then the grey water comes out here. We are very strict about grey water in New Zealand, so it's probably a more hardcore setup than a lot of other countries. 
and this is where the gas bottles are stored and other outdoor items like the grey water pipes and the toilet chemicals. Some of my expenses are paying for campgrounds, but again, it's a lot cheaper than what I was paying in Auckland. Other costs on top are the caravan insurance, and I find I pay a lot more for fuel, partly because I've got a larger car to tow, and also towing uses more fuel just because of the extra weight. I also pay for gas bottle swaps and I'm also paying for my internet modem so I can work from this location. I make my money as a graphic designer. I have been a graphic designer for over 10 years now and it works out because most campgrounds do have good internet. I personally pay less to live this lifestyle than I did living in the city. I find that means I don't have to work as many hours and I have more time for passion projects like my YouTube channel. It also means that I don't worry so much if the freelance graphic design work goes a little quiet one month. It gives me a bit more room to relax a bit more about money. <laughs> So there are plenty of windows around the whole caravan that I can open for good airflow. And then there is an insect screen. And then you've got the option for completely blocking out all light, which is absolutely perfect at night. And this is my bed. It's a small double with the corner cut out and it's really only just long enough for me. I am quite tall. And then there's extra storage underneath where I keep my shoes and spare sheets. And it's where the water pump and the hot water cylinder are too. And this is the wardrobe for all of my clothes. I've got a heater here which runs on gas and on power. This heater heats up this whole space very quickly just because it's a small area. And this is where my toilet and my shower are. I just close the shower glass. And it becomes the shower space. Very small, not my favourite, but it does the job. I live in New Zealand and mainly base myself on the North Island which has a more moderate temperature. It is around about 70 to 75 Fahrenheit in summer and around 50 to 60 Fahrenheit in winter but of course you get extremes on either side. This caravan is a UK caravan so it is designed for the colder climates. It's got double glazed windows and a heater and because it's such a small space, it does warm up quite well. My uncertainty with the caravan was I, I didn't have any towing experience, but I kind of just dived in and figured I'd learn as I went along. When I first started, I spent the majority of the time at traditional campgrounds where a lot of tourists stay and have got all the facilities. But the longer I've been doing this, I've started staying more at the Caravan and Motorhome Club park over properties, which are where members have opened up their land and other members can stay on there, sometimes for free, sometimes for a bit of money, and sometimes they'll have basic facilities as well. I generally like them because sometimes they have a great sense of community and usually a bit more privacy, a bit more space. If I'm traveling a lot, I might also stay at Department of Conservation campgrounds, which are like national park sites. They're usually, you know, beautiful surroundings, sometimes with a long drop, sometimes with proper toilet facilities. 
and then sometimes I might freedom camp which is like boondocking but because I tend to travel on my own I am more cautious with where I stay and I might not freedom camp as much as others do if they are in a van and they feel comfortable jumping into the driver's seat and driving off. That's one of the downsides with the caravan is if you feel uncomfortable at night you can't really just jump into the driver's seat and, and move off because you have to pack everything up, put the stabilizing legs up, reattach it to your vehicle. So that's one of the downsides of a caravan. I had thought I would struggle to date living this lifestyle, but it's worked out. I've actually started dating someone who lives in a bus. And my tip for anyone who does want to date, I would suggest traveling more slowly. You get the chance to meet more locals and get more of a community and have time to date. I don't have any plans to stop caravanning anytime soon. I've actually just bought myself a vintage caravan which I'm in the process of doing up and thinking about giving it a go living in that instead. It's an even smaller space than this so it shall be interesting. <laughs> Subscribe to Exploring Alternatives and check out our playlists for more stories like this. You can also follow Karen on her YouTube channel at Traveling K. Thanks for watching.